Dell is a Scottish flat earther that runs the channel Beyond the Imaginary Curve. Now he used to feature quite a lot on this channel, but over the years he's faded from the forefront of flat earth YouTube content creation. And he is certainly not a fan of me. Without further ado, he's got such a glacial look in him. You can see that he's just a snivelling little cretin. I would love to know the real history of this guy, because there's something that's just not quite right with him. If people do enough digging, they're going to find something on them. However, Dell is still active, and recently he posted a video about a slinky spring with some hilarious commentary. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon and Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a quick note on the Flat Earth Friday Supercuts. Now I've started to release the Flat Earth Fridays in six episode Supercuts, starting way back from the beginning over five years ago. The first two have been released, so that's 12 episodes. I'll put the link in the description for both. Drink the nostalgia in. So, back to Dell and his slinky spring. Now he's with his friend, and I think he thinks he's about to break physics. Let's find out how it goes. Right, so we've got a wee test with a slinky here, the spring. Before we get to that, I've just got a couple of things we want to say in regards to the last video, which is again as predicted with the water and no displacement of the liquid and the gas. We've got people coming in and asking for special pleading circumstances, like a magic acceleration that accelerates the bottle, the gas and the liquid all at the same time. There would have to be some sort of tractor beam. And if I use their language, this tractor beam would have to attach to every molecule of every component and accelerate it at the same rate, which is absolutely ridiculous. But it was predicted that they would come back with that. So I realise that probably doesn't make much sense. So let's have a look at the video he's talking about in question here, which was the video he released before this one. OK, so this is just to clarify. Um, and, and highlight what the actual point is here, okay? And I'm, I'm going to try and make it as simple as I can for you. So, whether you claim electrostatics, gravity, magnetism, or density as being the cause of the downward vector, and, you know, objects, you know, appearing to fall towards the Earth, and every one of these claims, these claims are claiming that when I let go of this, bottle it's the bottle and its contents that are going towards the earth which implies that there's an acceleration at play yes del a measured one at 9.8 meters per second squared a demonstrable acceleration okay that's what they're claiming electrostatics magnetism gravity or density well for the rest of us we know it's gravity but yes continue they're all claiming that there's something that's making this go towards the earth Okay. My problem is, is that in every example of acceleration, right, regardless of whether you use it centrifugal, where you, you spin it, you get a movement of the water displacing from the air to the outer reaches in a rotation, or if I move it linearly and I accelerate it in any direction, any direction at all, you get a... a push of the liquid towards the back and the air moves towards the front in the direction of the acceleration every single time 100% of the time that's a fact right that's called inertia Dell you Dell are accelerating the bottle in this instance and the contents inside it continue at that rate until something stops it which in this case is the bottle itself people when you let the bottle go, there is no displacement. The water stays exactly where it is. If this was being accelerated downwards, then the water would move towards the top and the air would move towards the bottom. That's what happens in cases of acceleration with liquids and gas. Oh, you mean like this bottle here in free fall around the earth? Yeah, that is what happens. When you drop a bottle from a few metres, you're not going to see that because you haven't got enough time to actually see it. It's not a solid. Yeah? If I froze that 
and the water was now solid and I'd done it, then everything would remain in place. But it's gas and it's liquid. This is how they behave. Okay? These people who are, are promoting the idea that this is being accelerated down are, are promoting an idea which is no observed to us. It's no something we can demonstrate. There is no accelerative way or force that I can you know, accelerate the bottle, the gas and the liquid all at the same rate with no displacement occurring. So as you can see, this was the video that Dell was referring to at the beginning of his slinky one. Unfortunately, Dell doesn't understand the physics or know that gravitational acceleration is entirely measurable. Right, back to the main video for today. Do you know, you end to see on that matter, Marty, before I move on. No, well, actually, I, I was actually outside and I seen a couple of kids, you know, they're just out of school, so I thought I'd ask them, because they're <laughs> educated and they know everything. No, according to some folk, you know, <laughs> kids can do it in school. Yeah, because kids repeat. <laughs> yes, they repeat established science that's been taught through experimentation. It's called learning. Unless you want to write off every single thing that you've ever learned. After all, that would be repetition too, wouldn't it? The thing about the, well, we've measured downward acceleration in kids in school. The point is, you're, you're no, um, you're assuming an object is a thing that goes from where it is to the earth. You're assuming that it's the object that moves through 3D space. That's the, that's the point that's in question. Ah, so we're all just imagining it then, are we? So, you know, you're just making the assumption that it's the object. It could be the reference frame that's in motion, and that's what we're seeking to investigate. Okay, so what are the alternatives then, Dell? Earth and everything on it, including you as an observer, are moving upwards towards the object? Well, surely you'd feel that, Dell. You flat earthers love to talk about your senses and how it doesn't make sense. And frames of reference don't change what's happening. They just explain what's going on from a different perspective. Gravity is not dependent on frames of reference. Not looking too good, that explanation, is it, Del? Anyhow, postulating, we've got a slinky here. So what I want to show you an example of, right? If we let it go, Marty, you take an end. And we both stretch the slinky. Be prepared here for a colossal failure of classroom physics. And they were just slagging off learning in school as well. Oops. We both stretch the slinky. And we both let it go at the same time. One, two, three, go. Oops. <laughs> you can see that the centre point stays where it is. And the two ends that have, and we're going to use the language here loosely, the two ends that had force applied to them are the ends that come back to the middle. Yes, you have put work in by stretching that spring. And that energy is transferred to the elastic store in the slinky. When you both let it go, that elastic potential energy is transferred into kinetic, sound, and a little bit of heat energy. Now, if I do it again, with just one yeah. side, right, we'll show this again. I, I let go in the three, you went three, and then let go. Right, so one, two, three, go. You can see that it meets in the middle. So by applying force at each end, we create the stretch. So when we put the force on the ends, it's the ends that come back to the centre point. Okay, and what does that prove exactly, Del? Now if I do it again, so now I'm just applying a force to one side. And if I take it to its point where it's starting to move the whole thing, like just there, if I just get it back to where it was, And now the side that I've applied the force to when it's let go, that end stays still. And the end that the force applied to is the end that moves back to there. So if Marty does it the other direction, just to the point where it's at a stretch, now Marty lets it go. So you can see there that whichever end the force is applied to, right? is the end it goes back. Incredible demonstration of elastic energy. Well done. Again though, what does this prove? Right, so if I then invert this, and this is where I'm gonna need Marty's assistance. So if I'm now holding this like this, and I remove the support. Now, and all these models, these models are claiming, let me just get that off the ground, 
these models are claiming that the force is being applied here. They're saying gravity is the thing that's pulling this thing towards the earth. So as we just demonstrated, if this is the end that's having the force applied to it, when I let this go, just as we see in the other example, this end is the end that should come back. Yes, he is about to do this. I mean, you'd think this was obvious, but here we go, Del, just for you. In the first example, you were the one applying the force, stretching that slinky so that the elastic force built up in the spring. This meant that the elastic energy was there in order for the spring to snap back, as you saw. When you lift that slinky spring up, the gravitational force is what's pulling that slinky down, almost counteracting the elastic force in that direction. Now this balances the forces in the spring, and when you let go of it, the gravitational force takes over again. And when the top hits the bottom, it gets compressed and there's no elastic force left, so it falls to Earth. That, Dell, is why it's happening, not because you've discovered some incredible new physics. Right, new idea with the bottom of the spring off the ground. Yep. Right. Let me just stabilise it. Right. Three, two, one. Well, you probably need to see that in slow motion, but as far as I'm concerned, that bottom never moved at all. Yep. Never in went down, you mean? Yes, and we'd expect that because of the reasons I just explained. It's not some incredible discovery, it's classical physics. So, the point being, if you heard that for us again, Marty, when we apply, we're using the terms here, force. When we apply force, it's that end that goes back, regardless of what side. It's that end that goes back to where it was originally. It's like they don't know that the elastic force exists. So when we invert it 90 degrees, and they're saying this end has now had a force applied to it, whether it be gravity or electrostatics or whatever it is, that's the end that you're saying the force has been applied to, to stretch it from this position. But that's not what we witness. Absolutely has it been moved? So, I would conclude. Here we go. That when I'm holding it like this, it's this end that's staying where it was. And it's us that are causing the stretch because you can see the force has now been applied here because it's this end that comes down. It's this end that compresses again. Okay, so we'll leave that with you and see what your thoughts are on that. Total, total nonsense. You're trying to reinvent the wheel by using a square. Unfortunately for Dell and his mates, no Nobel Prizes will be winging their way to them. But at least they tried. Well, there we go. Another Flat Earth Friday all done and dusted. I truly hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, always love catching up with some old friends. Thank you so much for watching. It truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed that one today, please do consider subscribing to the channel and of course, hitting that like thumbs up button too if you really enjoyed it. I've been Simon and Dan. Have yourselves a fantastic weekend and I'll see you all on Tuesday where Jake the arsehole is going after the ISS again. See you then. <laughs>